problem that I see is this time of the year we get projects ahead of what should be uh, in our thought process and what should be um, happening first before you start those projects. So that's what we're going to touch on today and uh, kind of like I said the, over, over the next um, this year I'm going to really over the next couple months here this year I'm going to really try to uh, focus the attention on that and really process that um, that number chart if you will or that process of elimination trying to get through to make sure the folks are taking the proper steps to get those projects uh, underway. Um, right now we hear uh, a lot of uh, going through the end of season some of the folks that are tuning into this down south you've got uh, you know another month month and a half left of season so kind of relate this to your time uh, frame uh, but what what I see is a lot of folks are already talking about shed hunting they're they're uh, you know wanting to get out and find those uh, you know those bucks that were in those core areas that they, they had passed up or, or uh, maybe something had moved into an area even public ground and what I I recommend doing is is uh, two things. One, if you're in a colder climate, such as we are here in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, parts of the upper uh, Midwest, you know, into Iowa, that I, I really recommend that you not uh, disturb. If you want to have a successful shed hunting season, um, I, I really recommend not disturbing that uh, herd right now. Is because it's such a rebound period now. Obviously, if you still have weeks of hunting left or a couple of days of hunting left or whatever like we do here, uh, you don't want to crash into those areas just to go and find a shed just for something to do, obviously. Uh, so that comes with folks that are, you know, maybe have filled their tags or, or are starting uh, to go back in and, and do some, you know, looking around. And so I recommend um, kind of kind of let, um, let that process come a little bit further down the line. That's one of the things right now that I see that everybody's trying to dive in and find these sheds before the squirrels get them, and, and that's, I mean, there's a lot of truth to that, um, but I guess if you're out squirrel hunting and you find a shed, uh, that's, uh, you know, the time to do so, I guess, uh, during that, but um, don't just go out in the, into the timber right now um, and into those bedding areas, crash into those bedding areas. Um, this, there's a, you know, we're used to that uh, it's about a three week or a month window of, of pretty cold weather that we have here in the uh, in the uh, in the upper midwest or the or the northeast and i always like to give those deer that time to uh, recover and if they'll shed they're going to be there today they'll be there tomorrow um but the worst thing that you can do is crash into those areas and push those uh, critters out and um, then they might not come back for two or three weeks well within that two or three week window obviously they're going to drop those uh, they're going to they're drop their shed those antlers somewhere else not on your parcel especially on small parcels so that's just kind of a tip that I've learned over the years um, not to not, not to rush in like a bull and, and try to you know pick those up as soon as they they drop and the reason is is you're, you're doing uh, you know you're doing yourself more harm than you are good uh, pushing those critters off. There's there's a process that I think that has to be at the forefront right now going into the end of the season in that scouting. Scouting to me um, not obviously preseason scouting where you're hanging your tree stands but uh, scouting for uh, sign. Scouting for that sign that's been left from the fall and that is really something that you can bank on um, going into the uh, season now going into two things going into one habitat season and then also if you're not going to do any um, habitat improvements or it's a least partial let's say or it's on a piece of public ground where you're not able to do any improvements um, all that obviously goes into into your um, notes and that's a uh, you know field note study so you have a uh, starting point for next year um, so, but on the habitat side of it is right now, um, the sign that is being left here, there's, there's a couple things to look for. This is the time that you can find some, some valuable information that's going to really resonate with your habitat improvements. Um, is there, uh, one of the questions I have come up is just because the deer are moving in a certain area, should I fit my habitat improvements to my uh, sign that the, the deer have left behind. Well, uh, the answer to that is yes and no. Yes, if it's in an area where you can uh, you can 
but wholeheartedly tell yourself that you can get in and out of that and hunt that um, next year and it's just something that you overlooked um, yes you can um, you want to make sure that you uh, enhance those you take it you take it full advantage of the sign that those critters have left behind I'm talking trails rubs shavings from the rubs on top of the leaves uh, so you know that it's fall you know not uh, not stuff that they you know did in velvet um, all of the sign that you're finding right now can be improved upon the problem with that is is what you have to determine is if you're in an area that doesn't uh, that that has enough uh, you know the correct habitat so enough woody browse enough um, feed enough uh, briars internal of the bedding areas and throughout your transition areas and you feel that your farm um, stem count like wise is is good then uh, you can bank on that that sign that you're finding now where does it throw you a curveball this is one of the biggest things that I, I you know tell folks to really watch if you're in an area like we are here and you get snow. Now, when I say snow, I don't mean uh, a dusting and it's uh, you know gone by noon, kind of that uh, Illinois, southern Illinois, west central Illinois, um, into you know parts of Missouri, you know down in the down you know southern areas. Uh, if you if you're in an area that uh, whether you're in a snow belt or whatever that case is, um, if you're in one of those spots throughout the Whitetail Range that gets dumped on with um, with uh, snow you have to determine you have to make sure that you're not scouting deer sign that uh, is internal of uh, bedding areas just because of thermal cover one that I'm thinking of right off the top of my head the gentleman actually took the uh, uh, cedars in areas and made made uh, browse pockets which was great the problem with it was is the the sign that they set the property up on was built off from thermal uh, cover and that thermal cover doesn't take place until uh, Jan or, uh, December and January. So that sign that you're finding when you're scouting now, going into January, and then you know folks find it and they want to enhance it and they run. The first thing you do is run and grab the chainsaw, and uh, you you start carving these um, ideas in. Is is then you're you're creating it to thermal cover. Why why is that an issue? Well, the biggest reason is is because that bedding area is not used during the um, particular times of the year that we need that to work. So um, that's one thing that you have to watch. And what the way to determine that is is if you're finding all the sign and you're finding beds um, in an area that's got a lot of white pine, that's got a lot of cedar, um, and uh, maybe out on these islands uh, that don't have the prowls. Now the islands are very, uh, in an island island setting, are very uh, can be very very productive if the browse is right. But if there's nothing but thermal cover on there, you can almost guarantee that these areas, um, cedar swamps, for example, are notorious for this. Uh, that they're not going to use those until they need that thermal cover. And and the the myth there's a myth out there in the country right now that everybody um, believes that these uh, swamps. And these um, th these spruce areas are are excellent uh, bedding areas throughout the entire year. And when we go in, I take clients internal of them. What you're going to find is there's no browse in there, and so your your whole hunting strategy is built off from hunting that location and thinking that that was the most powerful bedding area. And uh, happens in Michigan here a lot. But we start really digging into it, and we you know literally dig into it meaning we find the rubs and I you know pull the snow back and, and look at these rubs that are in there and we start looking at the deer dander and the pellet counts well what it is is you, they're all underneath of these cedar trees and is where this um, where this bedding uh, thermal cover is the greatest and there's no browse within 50 60 yards of that bed well I can almost guarantee you um, unless it's a extremely high pressured situation where there's the deer don't have another option where that's their only um, area of uh, their only sanctuary that the only place that they can get away I highly uh, can tell you without a reasonable doubt that's n that's not a bedding area that you want to bank on during the uh, fall during the uh, normal hunting uh, season um, so that is something to watch. Uh, that's a huge issue that I see. So the biggest thing is right now is before we start talking about the hinge cutting, before we start 
talking about how to enhance transition areas, how to how to create bedding areas, uh, what to do in these areas. One, make sure that if you're going to hire, like we said before, make sure that you're if you're going to hire someone such as myself or a consultant to come in and do some design, that you start the process of, of trying to f find and reaching out to who you're going to work with, and then you as a client. Um, one of the pieces of my homework puzzle that I give to my clients is, you know, going out and scouting and getting out on their on their ground if time permits, and then that way they can really get a feel for where that sign is. So if if uh, if someone um, you know can't get there until uh, to help you design it or to, to help you do that and or do anything on the property as far as putting a design together, let's say until um, until April. Well, the sign is there, you know, it's going to be a little weaker because of the, uh, if the sign is left behind in snow. So it's a good time for folks to get out and really start learning, studying, finding out what didn't work. And, and then if you find a shed, like I said, along the way when you're doing this, but scouting right now has to be at the forefront um, because that'll give you the information that'll help you have so you can give your um your consultant the information and also what it does guys is uh as as kind of um corny or cocky as this sounds i guess um one of the things that i always recommend to my clients to do is if you really want to test somebody and you want to find out if you've got the right person on your property is go out get this scouting find out you know from your field notes and start looking at this the sign that's left behind and then see when someone comes to design your property see if they design it and they're they're putting your your um you know they start talking about your transition areas they start walking into these areas where uh you know i take clients out on these hogback ridges and i start you know try to find out how far um are we in these safe zones are you far enough away from your bedding to feed where is your fall food compared to is it just thermal cover bedding area all these things tie in next thing you know we're standing at a tree and we're ribboning off a tree and uh, without even knowing where uh, you know the trail had has uh, you know coming through there at 20 25 yards in front of it and you know oftentimes I, I get clients asking you know you never, you never set foot on this property how do you know how did you know that that trail was there how did you know that that though that was the transition area or that was where I had seen a lot of deer before and maybe I just didn't hunt it as strong this year and the reason is is one it just comes with being on properties it, it comes with a, n a number uh, a vast amount of knowledge through um, the contour and being able to read browse and being able to pinpoint two main topics your feed and your bedding area and like I said as corny as that sounds we all as hunters you know that you have to know where your feed and bedding area is problem is where it comes into that is that thermal cover and how how you're setting your farms up in areas that th the thermal cover um, bedding areas affect your your doe bedding areas let's say um, you really have to know that uh, determination so um, kind of as a review get out there and do some scouting now take advantage of the weekends even though it's 22 degrees uh, excuse me uh, it's uh, 22 degrees and we're um, it's not you know the most enjoyable thing out there as far as uh, you know trying to stay warm uh, but if you've got the, uh, you know, now is the time if your season's over, you know, take the ATVs out. If the snow's not too deep, take the, you know, if it is, take the uh, snowmobiles out and, uh, you know, ride those sleds around and, and uh, get into those areas or get close to it, dress accordingly, and get out and start really focusing your attention on the areas that you can relate your field notes to and determine if those bedding areas that you thought were bedding areas last year because of the scouting that you found or those areas that you were hanging those stands on because they were just you know thick swamp um, you know or spruce areas let's say are they really as powerful of a bedding area as you think they are because the worst thing that you can possibly do is not do your scouting get to a point where it, it's now time to start um, putting together your bedding areas and and your transition areas off those bedding areas and then start doing this tree work and have that you you are you are uh, designing that or you are implementing those improvements off thermal bedding or thermal bedding cover and uh, next thing you know it doesn't relate to any of your your doe bedding areas that should be out closer to your feed that they're not bedding in because there there was none there before um, so those are a couple of, of points those are stuff that stuff that I really um, that I really in in these regions with the cold temps and the snow low that I really research and I really dig deep with with my clients is because that can make or break a uh, small parcel so 
process of elimination. Um, follow along. We'll keep picking through the order here. We're in that stage or that phase right now where you need to really focus on um, after the season is done. Um, if you do have tags left, I've got tags left here in Michigan. We're going to be this week coming up here. It looks to be really good. After that, as long as nothing is shedded out by then, um, we're going to transition into that. I'm going to go into my scouting. I'll be bringing you guys along with that. We're going to start the scouting process here. And then after that, we'll start talking about what comes next. Um, but like I said, I may talk about certain things that come that come next as far as your, you know, your, uh, um, you know, the word hinge cutting in this, but hopefully we can put this into perspective for a lot of folks that you can just start picking away at these and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, keep that in the time frame that we are and then that way it'll help help everybody um, no matter where you're at in the country um, even if you are watching this and you're down south and you're not quite done with the season you can start going back through these videos through the playlist and really start putting together okay what should I be doing now um, should I have already reached out to somebody should the design be done now should my scouting be done then I then I can go in after I know that that process is you know what what that bedding area is where it was how that relates to my hunts from last year now I can start going in and improving my habit my habitat but what's the first step of my habitat that I need to improve so that's the that's the whole goal of, of really um, going through this guys and really um, placing it in an order that you can follow but the biggest thing is uh, at a recap and ending point here the the biggest thing is is really take that to, into consideration really take that to heart and really stop if you're in a region that 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 uh, thermal cover is affecting your bedding areas because they're now the deer that i'm hunting now um, are not bedded in the same areas right right now uh, it's kind of a 50 50 mix because we don't have a lot of snow uh, but our temperatures are low so that's affecting it but it's not they don't need a deer can lay out in um in you know sub-zero weather um, with with snow on their back it's when the winds get to them and they need that they need side cover they don't need any shelter from above um, until the snow gets extremely bad and then or this weather gets extremely bad and we have these fronts coming in and we start getting dumped on with the snow that's when you start seeing these deer transition now you gotta look back at your weather and you gotta get all fits to that um, so if you're if you're on a property and there's hardly any snow like there is now then you're obviously you're going to see some of that stuff shining through that's uh, from the fall now if we if we do this a week from now where we're supposed to get another uh, blast of snow here then obviously we're going to be reading that stuff from those internal of those swamps in those uh, that thermal cover area so a uh, couple points there guys appreciate you following along Merry Christmas everybody stay safe and uh, Habitat season is ramping up here, but let's make sure we're doing it um, at the in the proper steps at the proper time.